Ever since man woke at the dawn of human history and became aware of himself, he has asked the questions we all feel the need to be answered. Who am I? What am I? Where am I? Why me? What happens next? Man's insatiable curiosity to find the answers to these questions has led to some of his finest achievements in science, the arts and philosophy. By observing and gathering evidence about the universe around him, he has evolved a progressively greater understanding of these fundamental questions. And yet, there exists a large number of people who choose not to answer these through observation and evidence. For many have chosen to put blind faith in supernatural books written many hundreds of years ago over and above hard, irrefutable scientific fact. In this series of programs, I will show that, at best, blind faith serves to virally perpetuate blind ignorance from generation to generation and at worst, for all of us, it's downright dangerous. My name is Richard Lawkins. I'm a professor of natural sciences at Cambridge University. For most of my adult life, I have studied the natural world in detail, having been fascinated by this wondrous planet we live on since I was a small child. When you consider the sheer complexity of life, it is very difficult, even unfathomable, to grasp how all of this could come into existence. Science marches forward, striving to find the answers, but there are a large number of people for whom science is either not enough or not an issue at all. That includes the majority of the population of the United States, who simply believe all of this was made in just six days by a cosmic deity only 6,000 years ago, some 9,000 years after the domestication of the dog. It's amazing, isn't it, how we are related to these monkeys behind me. For many people, that is something they steadfastly refuse to believe, despite overwhelming scientific evidence. Look closely and you'll see they react very similarly to we humans. They hold hands, they show affection by hugging and kissing, they smile to show happiness and frown to show sadness. It doesn't really take a scientific genius to put two and two together and realize that we are essentially the same creature with but a very few small differences. In fact, we now know that we share 98% of the DNA of these magnificent creatures. Thanks to nearly 200 years of research Beginning with Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, we now know that all creatures on this planet are related. But there are millions who choose to ignore the evidence, arguing that none of this could have come about by chance. It must have been designed. The horse is an extremely complicated creature, isn't it? In design terms, Pruffles here is many, many magnitudes more complex than a space shuttle. If we were to throw all the components of the space shuttle into a scrapyard and wait for a hurricane to blow through and, by sheer chance, assemble it all back together, the odds of that happening, though impossibly small, are many times larger than this horse miraculously being assembled direct from the primordial soup. It's no wonder that many follow the fallacy that if it looks designed, then it must be designed. Because nothing like you or I, or this beautiful horsey, 
could ever have come about solely by chance. And in a way, the creationist is right. Nothing as complex as a horse could have come about by chance. But it is a common misconception that evolution is about chance events. Evolution occurs through the incredibly non-random process of natural selection. Those best able to survive in their habitat generally go on to reproduce, each generation yielding genetic mutations both advantageous and disadvantageous. When the disadvantages outweigh the advantages for an individual, natural selection shows no mercy in eliminating weakness from the gene pool. You may suppose it cruel, but it's how we came from this to this. And even if that doesn't fully convince you, it's surely more convincing than having, by fiat, the most complicated being imaginable, creating all of life on Earth in six days only, 6,000 years ago, according to a 2,000-year-old book. Isn't it? Well, even in educational establishments throughout the world, blind faith in superstition is allowed to prosper and is even encouraged at the expense of proper science. And that's certainly true of this one. I've come to a university in the USA to see how, even at the highest level of the US education system, faith and ignorance have replaced science. This one has on display dinosaur bones that are dated as being only 3,000 years old. For this is a university with a difference. It is Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia, a fundamentalist Christian university given full accreditation by the US government in 1971. I have come to talk to its founder and chancellor, Jerry Falwell, and ask him why he sees blind faith as more convincing than hard fact. Richard, welcome to Liberty. Thank you. Glad to be here. So you've got some questions for me. Yes. I noticed on my way in that there are dinosaur bones labelled as only 3,000 years old. Could I ask for the scientific evidence for that? No problem at all. Here it is. But what makes you think that particular text is superior to masses and masses of other scientific texts that overwhelmingly show dinosaurs to be millions, not thousands, millions of years old. Could I ask you what makes this text unscientific? In here is the truth. That's what scientists want to know, isn't it? It's the most scientific book you're likely to read. I beg to differ. For instance, there's no mention of the dinosaurs in either testament. None of the facts as portrayed in this book have been backed up by hard physical evidence. Why should I trust what's said here, over and above that which many, many, many independent scientists have found and proved? Look, you have your beliefs and I have mine. You place your trust in science, a man-made endeavor. I place my trust in God, the ultimate truth. In my mind, there's no question which is the more valid. Well, I thought you'd say that. Can I move on to the question of how a fully accredited institution of higher education can possibly suggest that dinosaurs are only 3,000 years old? I've already answered that question. Oh, I'm not sure you have. Isn't it the value of education to impart our knowledge of the universe as we know it to the up-and-coming generation by our observations and evidence, devoid of superstition. I've already shown you the evidence. With respect, you've done no such thing. You've shown me a book. You might as well have shown me Tolkien's Lord of the Rings as evidence for, for, for the existence of midgets, elves or fairies 3,000 years ago. There's no mention of them in the Bible. I think that proves my point. Oh, how convenient. Then it must be true. I put it to you that displaying dinosaur fossils as being no older than 3,000 years is an educational disgrace and that you have no right to call this institution a university. More than half the people of America would disagree with you. The moral majority? Yes, if you want to put it that way. So, you're really suggesting that most Americans are as ignorant as you are? I prefer to call them as enlightened. That's what liberty is all about. Well, I prefer to call them stupid in that case. It was clear that the Reverend Forwell wasn't going to listen to reason. 
He truly believes, despite all the evidence, that dinosaurs are only 3,000 years old, as do 60% of the American population. And yet, he comes across as a sharp, quick-witted, intelligent man, proving ominously that religion is not just a disease for the uneducated, it can infect even the brightest minds. So, why are we here? How did we come to be? Well, looking out over the Grand Canyon here in the USA, I couldn't honestly blame any primitive mind for suggesting that this splendid spectacle was the fingerprint of a god or gods. It truly is amazing to behold. But I hope that I've shown that sights such as this come about through natural causes. If not, that puts a burden on God. As soon as he physically interferes with the universe, then he becomes a question for science to answer. If you really believe that the universe and all of the amazing life on this planet was created by God, then God himself becomes a part of the physical world, subject to the same natural laws as the rest of us and open to the same scrutiny. So far, there has been no hard scientific evidence to show that God is currently interfering with the physical world or that he ever has done. And anyone who believes that he has is clearly a product of unintelligent design. In the next program, I ask the question does religion determine our moral behavior? Or does it merely cloud what moral sense we already have, sometimes leading to devastating consequences?